A building is located in a part of the country where the annual heating season is 23 weeks. The building is occupied from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Friday. The building owner pays 30 cents per therm for gas heating, which includes the costs of fans, pumps, etc. And the gas furnace efficiency is 77%. The building has the following characteristics. Internal volume is 600,000 cubic feet. Inside temperature is 70 degrees. Ventilation rate is one air change per hour when occupied and half an air change per hour when unoccupied. And for the walls, windows, and roof, we know the total area of each of those surfaces, and we know the overall heat transfer coefficient, U value for those surfaces. And then for the floor, we've been told that it's a slab on grade, and we have the length of the perimeter or the exposed edge, and then the B value, which is sort of like the heat transfer coefficient, but different units, and we'll talk about that. In the past, the building owner kept the interior temperature fixed at 70 degrees. What will be the annual savings in dollars if the building owner installs an automatic setback thermostat to reduce the interior temperature from 70 degrees to 58 degrees during unoccupied time? So there's a couple of ways that energy can be saved in this situation. It's good that they're already cutting back the amount of outside air they bring in during unoccupied hours, but they're still maintaining a set point of 70 degrees as it stands. With the proposal to change it to 58, they wouldn't have to condition all that outside air up to 70 degrees, they would just get it to 58. So that's a big win on the ventilation side. And then the other advantage is there's always gonna be heat transfer through the walls, windows, roof, and floor. And the delta T is the difference between the indoor temperature, normally 70 degrees, and the outdoor temperature. Now if the indoor temperature is going to be 12 degrees lower, then that's that much less conduction loss that has to be counteracted. So let's summarize the steps that we'll go through. The first thing we want to do is quantify the reduction in heating load for the fresh air, for the ventilation. And when we say heating load, we're talking about a heat transfer rate, so we're finding BTUs per hour. And then in a similar manner, we want to find the reduction in heating load due to conduction. So that heat transfer through the walls, windows, roof, and floor that is going to be of a lesser delta T after this change. So first we're looking at ventilation and then we're looking at conduction. And again, that's BTUs per hour. And then collectively those two quantities taken together is the total energy transfer rate out of the building. But what we really want to find is the total amount of energy saved over some period of time, specifically a year after the setback change has been made. And in that, we should also account for the furnace efficiency. And now when we're talking energy, that's BTUs. And lastly, we can turn BTUs into therms and then turn therms into money to find the annual savings. And of course, that's dollars. So let's step through this starting with the ventilation losses. For that, we can assume purely sensible heating. So we can say Q dot V equals 1.08 CFM delta T. And the CFM, we know that there is half an air change per hour right now when the space is unoccupied. And we know the total volume is 600,000 cubic feet. So if half of that is changing every hour, then we can calculate CFM from that. We just have to work out the units. And then for the delta T, the actual delta T for the outside air is whatever temperature it is. Perhaps it's very cold. Maybe it's, I don't know, 30 degrees. And it's being raised up to some desired internal temperature of 70 degrees. But what we really want to find is the reduction, how much of that delta T is being saved. So assuming the temperature outside is lower than 58, the delta T is at least 12, and it's being reduced by 12. So we're really finding the savings. We're giving back, so to speak, 12 degrees of the delta T. Instead of going from 30 to 70, it's going from 30 to 58. So this delta T is not how the outside air is changing. It's how much less it has to change to get to 58 instead of 70. So plugging in here, we can say 1.08 times half an air change per hour, and I'll use the units of change per hour. And then a whole change would be 600,000 cubic feet per change. And we want CFM, so we have to change hours to minutes. 
and the delta t is 12 because it's going from 70 to 58. So if we get rid of change and hours, we're left with cubic feet per minute, which is what we want this term to be in. And then the delta t is in degrees f. As long as this term is CFM and this is degrees f, this always comes out in BTUs per hour. So that's 64,800 BTUs per hour saved by not having to condition that outside air during unoccupied hours all the way up to 70 degrees. So that is a big win and that takes care of the first step. Next, we want to find the reduction in heating load due to conduction. So that's where we have to start looking at the walls, windows, roof, and floor. So in all cases, these formulations are going to take on a heat transfer type setup. So that's Q equals UA delta T, where U is the overall heat transfer coefficient, A is the area, and we'll do that individually for each surface, walls, windows, roof, and floor, and then add them up. So we can say the total conduction loss is the loss through the walls plus the loss through the windows, it's beginning to sound like a little John song, plus the loss through the roof and the floor. And conveniently, we've been given those total heat transfer coefficients and the areas. And the delta T, again, the actual delta T may be very large, but it's going to get smaller by 12 degrees because it's no longer going to be keeping the internal temperature of the building at 70. It's only going to be keeping it at 58. That's that much less delta, so that much less conductive heat transfer will happen, and there'll be correspondingly less loss. So let's plug right in for the first term, which is the walls. We're going to do UA delta T for each term. The heat transfer coefficient for the walls is 0.15, and the area is 10,000. And I'll just write the units for this first one because the others are going to be similar. But it's we want to see it once just to make sure we're on the right track. BTU per hour, foot squared, degrees F. That is the heat transfer coefficient for the walls, and then the area is 10,000 square feet and the delta T is 12 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the reduction in delta T. So degrees Fahrenheit goes away, square feet goes away, and we'll be left with BTUs per hour. But let's do all the terms since they're all gonna have a similar structure. For the windows, it's 1.1 for the heat transfer coefficient, which is much higher than the walls because the insulation properties of a window are far less. But there's less area, so 2,500 square feet and delta T of 12, that's the case for all of them. 0.06 for the roof, much lower. The roof is better insulated, which is good because it has much, much more area. And delta T of 12. And then for the last part, for the floor, the formula is a little different. We're gonna refer instead to equation 42.5, which says that the heat transfer by conduction for a slab is given by P, F, delta T, where delta T is T inside minus T outside, and P is the slab edge coefficient, and F is the perimeter. And quite conveniently, we've been given that slab edge coefficient. They called it a B value here. The MERM calls it P, but that's 1.6. And you notice the units are BTU per hour per linear foot degree Fahrenheit instead of per foot squared. And then the exposed edge, which is the perimeter, is given in linear feet. So instead of an area and a U value that's per unit area, we have a length and a B value, which is per unit length. So it's gonna work out very similar to the way these other ones are set up. I'll write the units for this one. It's 1.6 BTU per hour per linear foot, hour per linear foot degree F, that's the B value or the slab edge coefficient. And then the linear footage of the slab is 720 feet, and the delta T is still 12, just like for the others. Linear feet goes away, degrees Fahrenheit goes away, and we should be able to sum these up. I'm gonna write the numbers individually. I just like to appreciate the magnitude of each term so you can see where the savings are coming from. First term for the walls was 18,000. These all have units of BTUs per hour. 33,000 for the windows, 18,000 for the roof, and 13,824 for the slab. It's interesting, the sum of all that area for the walls and roof is still barely more than the windows. And then if you take the sum of all that, that's 82,824 BTUs per hour. That is the total amount of reduction in conduction losses. Okay, so let's go ahead and combine that with 
the reduction from the ventilation and get a total reduction of heat loss. We can say Q dot total equals Q dot ventilation plus Q dot conduction and we'll add the 64,800 BTUs per hour from the ventilation to the 82,824 BTUs per hour for the conduction and get 147,624 BTUs per hour. Okay, so that's still an energy transfer rate. Now we actually wanna find out the quantity of energy, so not BTUs per hour, but BTUs. We're looking for the total energy saved and then we can find out the actual annual savings. So for the total energy saved, let's remember what Q dot really is. Q dot is energy per unit time, so it's a Q, just BTUs, over some amount of time. So if we rearrange that, then we can say Q, not per unit time, equals Q dot times time, right? And the time here is the amount of time that we're in unoccupied hours because that's when we're going to apply this night setback or night and weekend setback, we'll call it the unoccupied time. So the heat transfer rate times the total amount of unoccupied time will give us the quantity of energy saved. So our total heat transfer rate was that 147,624 BTUs per hour. And what's the total amount of unoccupied hours? Well, we have, first of all, the weeknights. They're occupied from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., so that's 10 hours. So that's 14 hours on the weeknights, Monday through Friday that the building is not occupied. So for 14 hours a day, five days a week, it's unoccupied. And then also on the weekend, on the weekend it's completely unoccupied. So for another 24 hours a day, two days a week, it's also unoccupied. So that gets rid of days and we're left with hours per week plus hours per week. And how many weeks are we talking about? Well, it said there was a 23 week heating season. So we're gonna apply this for almost half of the year. So all of that times 23 weeks. And they, this has units of hours per week, so weeks is gonna go away and we're gonna be left with just hours. So we'll have BTU over hour times hours and we'll ultimately be left with just BTUs, which is what we want. So this whole thing works out to 118 hours per week, which makes sense because they're operating 10 hours per day, five days a week, so it's a 50 hour week. There's 168 hours in a week. So that's 118 hours of unoccupied time 118 hours of unoccupied time times 23 weeks, that's 2,714 hours per year times the 147,000. We get Q equals four times 10 to the eighth, and I got a little bit of rounding going on here, BTUs, and that's BTUs per year saved. Now, one important thing to note here is that this does not account for efficiency. That's how much less energy is being lost from the building but in terms of saving on fuel for heating, the story is even better because the furnace isn't 100% efficient. So the actual amount of fuel required to deliver four times 10 to the eighth BTUs is more than this number. So the savings will actually be even more. And also, as we're accounting for the efficiency, let's take the opportunity to change units from BTUs to therms because that's gonna make it easier for us to quantify the savings in dollars. We can say Q actual, equals this Q that we found out along the way. Or you could think of this as Q fuel and this Q loss in the building. I'm sort of making up subscripts as I go, but I think you get the idea. Is the Q we just found over the efficiency. So four times 10 to the eighth BTUs over 0.77, which is the furnace efficiency. So that kind of shows you that this number is gonna get bigger. And then there's 100,000 uh, BTUs in a therm. So that's one times 10 to the fifth. BTU per therm. So BTUs will go away and we'll end up with therms. And it turns out to be 5,203 therms of heating gas saved each year. And all that's left to do is find the annual savings. We know it costs 30 cents per therm and we have 5,203 therms per year. The units cancel and we get $1,561 per year saved by implementing this night setback.